they were eager. You know, some of them would just be like, we're trying to lower food prices, and before we even say, would you like to pay, they were like, okay, give me that. And they would start signing it. And, and it would go around and come pick it up on the other side of the market with like 200 so signatures. How did Busu respond to uh, this proposal, a uh, lobbyist, $2 per student lobbyist? Uh, if I recall, they uh, worked with you to amend that proposal and to change the proposal into something else, uh, something that didn't involve a program fee and instead was a standing order. Uh, so did you get a new petition in order to achieve uh, the standing order uh, to uh, the policy petition that you submitted uh, sometime in March of 2013? Okay, so we had this petition and we brought it to Busu for a referendum that could go through. and. Uh, Basically, they said, oh, this doesn't seem very realistic because, you know, if every student at Brock pays $2 per credit, uh, sorry, not per credit, per, per, per year, um, then that would end up with something around maybe, let's see, we have 18,000 students times that by two, so we would end up with 36,000. And to my understanding of the time, it cost at least 100 k to hire a lobbyist. Um, so they said, okay, you know what, but we appreciate the cause and we're gonna work with you and we're gonna try to see what we can do here. Um, so I said, yeah, sure, you know, uh, you know, all, all the power to you guys, like, it's, it's the they represent the students. So I totally trust them. Um, and, uh, but after I read sort of, they amended the, the petition that we had originally, uh, for the, for the referendum, and they took over the words to Exo. Okay, the question is, okay, now that this, uh, anyone feel free to answer, just, no. Um, the question is, okay, since Boos is now taking this on as, let's say, concentrating on basically expanding Isaacs, okay, is this sort of um, an evasive action to evade the main problem just because it's easier? Or is this just a first step to make it easier for the future? I'm sorry I couldn't think on my feet, but this is a really strong point. I'm not speaking for myself. This is for all students. What is, what is it when you came here that made you say, the prices are too high, this is not appropriate for students, student budget. Um, are there alternatives on campus? Did you find those alternatives? Okay, um, I know a sushi place uh, in downtown. Buffets are like $12, $13 for a buffet. This is $8 for a butter chicken and rice. So, Peter, uh, are you suggesting that the prices here aren't appropriate to market value? They're quite high, quite high. And it's not just regular, like, okay, sure, you could say because the sushi place is not really like a, like a university sort of thing, usually these things are more expensive. Okay, let's, uh, let's compare it to other universities. Other universities, like the University of Queens, has a buffet that's for approximately five dollars. So why can't we do that here? Exactly my point. Uh, I'm just sta stating the facts here. So uh, your petition in the spring asked for ten five dollar food prices uh, and was presented to council. How did council? Um, Received that petition. What happened to the to the petition that you submitted in the spring? The petition said, "Would you be willing to pay two dollars, two dollars, over every year, okay, over your tuition, in order to have enough money to hire a lobbyist?" Now, okay. so that would students, be a... students are, are are mostly skeptical to even pay any amount of fee that they don't have to. But people were more than willing to sign this petition, and we got over 500 signatures in less than 24 hours. So your original petition was for a so they were fee. willing to pay. 
They okay. were willing to pay. But the petition now, that was that became a standing order at council, that was um, a different request. That wasn't we want a right lobbyist. Now lobbyists take much more than what students would be able to conjure up in one year. Um, so that wasn't exactly that the plan didn't end up being like that. And Gusu suggested that they would be willing to help us with the cause and uh, there was no need to uh, put this uh, petition in the referendum. So uh, if you go to Busu.net, you'll see a standing order and that standing order uh, under their, their policies to have affordable food prices on campus has been there since the spring, since you submitted the petition. It's supposed to be, yes. And have you seen Busu fulfilling that policy at all? Not really. And because even after I agreed to what they were saying, in the sense that they would take on this task, they ended up removing the word sedexo from the entire thing. And the so, words for profit. Right. So it basically defeats the whole purpose of this interview. Just something on the side. I don't know how, months, how many months it's been right now, but absolutely nothing has been obvious. Right. Nothing on the forefront? Like uh, I mean, How do you draw a contrast between Guernsey Market and Sinexo and uh, the Union Station and Isaac? And Isaac yeah. um, definitely Busu um, and Isaacs has a more... It, it has sort of a better feeling because the people who are serving you are also students and they come from where you come from and you know that the money you're paying, you know that part of it is not only going to Busu, which would help you indirectly, but also to other students who would actually need them. Okay. So, are there the $5 options at the other market? Um, you mean that you mean Isaacs? Yeah. Well, Isaacs has pretty good prices. Like, you can get a combo for like five sixty-five at uh, at um, like noodles and uh, pepper steak. You can get that for like buy something. So let's take a, a little look around the, the room. Obviously, we're not going to be able to look at anyone's face. We're just noticing that the market today is full. Uh, every table has people sitting at it. Most of the tables have people actually eating their lunch here. It doesn't seem like the market is having a problem with the food prices. The market itself is able to sustain the food prices. They're, they're paying the prices. What's the consequence of these people uh, overpaying for food? Well, before we look at the consequences, I think it's important to realize that people mostly pay all these ridiculous prices just because they feel it's so hopeless that how can anybody stand to such giants and do anything? Like, everybody has school, everybody's busy, so basically they go to school for the four years or whatever, you know, you get exams, you get assignments, bam, 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 no one has any time to confront the issue of ridiculous prices that are just abusive. Okay, we're talking to Peter Hanan. Uh, we're going to find out more on this issue.